Um, and so the idea, if, if the self, if what we mean by the self is a story, hello I am, this is where I've come from, this is where I'm going, this is the story I tell myself, whether it's a positive or negative story, that's a story that's running around in our heads all the time, and that's what we mean when we say, who am I? If that's true, which to me, it seems true that the self is a narrative, then maybe we can learn something from the stories that we've always been telling ourselves. And so I became very interested in myth through the study of some of the works of Carl Jung, who really emphasised the importance of myth. And so um, I've been looking at religious myth, so the Christian myth is driven by Western culture, Buddhist myths, Hindu myths, uh, creation myths of ancient Babylon, and then of course our, our contemporary myths, what's the movie industry? You know, it's, um, it's, it's really uh, all about narrative, the great dreams of our time, Tolkien's um, Lord of the Rings and um, you know, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter, <coughs> these great fantasies have really um, thrust themselves upon our culture or gripped our culture because they are very powerful, hey man, sorry for the late, that's okay, um, because they are very powerful stories, fundamentally. So, so, the idea is that the self is a story, and therefore if the self is a story, we can learn something from looking at deep, profound, and important narratives. So, so yeah, in ways to self, I'm, I'm covering alchemy today. I've talked also about Gnosticism, about the myth of the hero, and, and other, other themes like that which um, Carl Jung would think of as archetypal themes, themes that seem to eternally recur in the drama of our imagination. When we try to think of a story, uh, we try to think of a story in a way that seems to be structured according to certain fundamental, eternal or timeless patterns. So that's kind of the spirit behind this today, is, is looking at story, looking at the stories that have informed the development of our culture. And insofar as the stories have informed the development of our culture, we are all uh, nested inside that culture in some sense. Part of who we are when we tell ourselves a story is who our parents were, who our friends were, who are, uh, the, the, the culture around us, there's narratives there everywhere which we're absorbing. And so part of it is, um, is I think going back to our roots and looking at our roots and looking at the, the, the really fundamental stories. Um, because I think story is powerful and I think that really, as I emphasised a minute ago, everything in our lives is dependent upon the story we tell ourselves. Um, and so, let's get clear on the stories. Um, that's ways to self at a macro and then today we're going to be talking about Alchemy, alchemy. Um, quick little survey. Does, hands up. Who's familiar with what the word alchemy means or what alchemy is already? A few people. Um, and what are our thoughts on it? What's our impression of it already? Just to get a sense of everyone's level of understanding coming into this. Um, I leave that open to anyone. If what's, what do we know about it? What have we heard about alchemy? Is it, is it to trans, transform something from one material into a high value material? Yep, transformation, definitely. Alchemy's, um, a big emphasis of alchemy was, was the turning of lead into gold, as, as is quite famously said. So turning something um, of, a, of a lower value to a higher value. And, um, and it's the art of transformation, certainly. Um, any other ideas? Any other impressions? It's got some kind of magical otherworldly, timeless quality which is experienced through things like um, music or art or religion, maybe things like that. Yeah, two really good points, two really, really good points. So alchemy is about transformation, which means metamorphosis, which means the which means for a thing to be, and then for a thing to be radically other than it is. And I think this is important in our 
Yeah, two, two seconds. Um, so it's a transformation, magical quality as well. So let me just talk a, a moment on magic. <laughs> magic. But b before science really got going in the you know 17th, 16th century or something, um, what we were pursuing in the West was what's called natural philosophy. So this came from the Greeks, Empedocles, and, and different people like this, thought of the world as made of fire, water, air, earth. And it's easy enough to see where they would draw such conclusions, because when you look, it seems to be made of that, those, sort of, those sort of stuffs. And so this natural philosophy was really a philosophy, it was a holistic understanding of the world. And it was um, trying to understand the riddle of matter and spirit. And um, really, when, Jake, you just mentioned magic, magic, you know, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, the occult philosopher, thought of magic really as the perfection of natural philosophy. So if natural philosophy were to attain its highest goal, what that would be would be a form of magic. And what's magic? Magic, as Matthews mentioned, magic is really about transformation. Transformation in a way that is mysterious, that is hard to explain, but is there. It's there. And, and, and to me, um, as Jake mentioned, um, creativity and magic seem to be very, very closely aligned concepts. I mean, to me, it is a complete riddle where things come from that are created. Um, I don't know that we can put that to an empirical test. I don't know where things come from. I don't know where these ideas come from. These seem to be within my soul, whatever that means. They seem to be the intuition of what I'd like to bring forth, whatever that means. And so magic, the perfection of the natural philosophy, is really about engaging with the mystery of life, the mystery of the soul, the mystery of the anima, the spirit of the world, and working with matter to bring something forth, to perfect things, to bring forth a creation, to bring forth an idea, a, a product as entrepreneurs do, an art form, these different creations. So yes, transformation, magic, definitely. Yeah. You said that purification as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, really good. So exactly, yes. So so part of the, the meta process, the, the grand process of transformation is a, a purifying, a, 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 the, the alchemists call it the calcinatio, which, which meant um, the calcination, the, the burning or the searing process of the metals, where the metals were burnt under intense heat to take away all the imperfections. And similarly, um, if we're thinking of all of this psychologically, ways to self, if we're thinking about this about ourselves, we can think about the imperfections of thought, the errors we make, an error in life, a mistake, a mistaken attitude could be regarded as a sort, sort of imperfection, or mistaken moods when we feel we've been harmed, when maybe we haven't been, or anger, or, or different thoughts and emotions and things that come up in ourselves that could be considered alchemically kind of impurities, things that could be done away with, the kind of dross of our personality, to, to allow to shine forth what is pure, perfect, true. Kind of some of the, some of the, the most essential forms of life, the essential truths of life. And I think that any process of learning really is about this, this impurities idea as well. I think really learning is just about getting rid of our impurities. Like, okay, I think this, but is that true? Is that really true that I think, I think that, I believe that, but is it true? Is it, is it bringing me forward in my life? So, awesome guys, so absolutely. Transformation, which involves the getting rid of impurities, and alchemy is, um, is it is a magical art, it is a magical tradition. And um, I think it's, it, it's, it can be difficult for the modern mind to approach the idea of magic, because we, we can be quite saturated in a materialistic worldview. But um, nonetheless, here is this magical tradition. A few notes I'm gonna say on alchemy, just to give you guys some more context, just before getting into it. 
is just the impact alchemy has had on our culture. Like, it is profound. And the more I learn about it, the more it absolutely stuns me. Um, science, in all its glory, is a child of alchemy. It is the, the, the alchemy bore science. Al science came from the alchemical work. Um, we, have a, we have an Arab alchemist called Jabir, I think his name is, um, and he was, he was known as the father of modern chemistry. He was in the 13th century, I believe, in, a, in the Middle East, pioneering the empirical method, saying, look, if we want to know things, maybe we should test things, maybe we should be rigorous about things, maybe we should try out different things. So we've got Jabir, we've got um, Robert Boyle, we've got the, what's it called, um, the Royal Society in, in England, in London, I think it still exists in, in town somewhere. Um, the Royal Society, so that was like the 17th century, that was Newton, Robert Boyle, people like that, who were, this is just crazy, this is like, this is Rosicrucianism, so this was a band of, alchem this was an alchemical brotherhood, a secret alchemical brotherhood of people pursuing the alchemical knowledge, people pursuing the art of transformation, people pursuing magic, or we could just say pursuing truth, pursuing a, a complete knowledge of the world, and in the context of religious turmoil, when they would have been persecuted, maybe killed, they banded together and said, look, maybe we could come together, I can learn some stuff, share my knowledge with you, you can share my knowledge, and we can create a, a network of knowledge sharing. And this institution, Stephen Hawking's held the seat for the Royal Society. So it, it is it really, really fundamental to the emergence of science. So that's um, the Royal Society, which was built from Rosicrucianism, Newton, and I'd like to remind everyone was practicing practicing